22 Feet Academy TV, powered by SUV TV, sponsored by Muscle Milk, the official protein recovery drink of 22 Feet Academy, Denny's, welcome to America's Diner, Under Armour, protect this house, and the Imagine Center, Health and Fitness Club, the official venue of 22 Feet Academy. And welcome here to the beautiful Imagine Center as we get ready to bring you another presentation of 22 Feet Academy Basketball. It features the select squad here for 22 Feet taking on Combine Academy. It was a three-point victory, 66 to 63 for Combine Academy in the previous matchup uh, against the 22 Feet Varsity team. And here you've got uh, the select squad taking the court to see if they can make it one and one in terms of 22 Feet Academy and the entire program roster for the day. Appreciate you joining us here for our Combine Academy. The roster we were provided with just has the last name. So if you hear the first names omitted, that is the rationale uh, behind it being so. And uh, we appreciate you uh, sticking with us. We'll try to get those first names possibly at halftime. But when that game is close to getting going, Coaches aren't always uh, focused on the secondary aspects of it when it comes to rosters and things of that nature. So we appreciate you joining us, and we are underway. It's Combine Academy who will get it first, and we're going to have a trip to the free throw line. There for number 32. That's Pierce. So Pierce will grace us with our first free throws of the contest. That one rolls around and falls down. It will be Combine Academy that scores first here in this contest. Same touch used there on the second one. So we're gonna have a foul there as well. And goes against 22 feet, so it'll be Combine Academy's ball with a chance to make some more noise there on the offensive end. Baseline's cut off, so they kick it out for the three-point attempt. That one's no good. Off to the races, goes 22 feet. Nice easy lay on the other end there for number 12. That's Simon Hunt Ramirez. She ties us up at two apiece. So we're tied at two. 22 feet got their first two via fast break. It was two trips to the free throw line for Pierce. for Combine Academy for, for their first points. Regardless of how they've got them, both of them have a deuce as uh, everybody looks to get loose here in the first half. Just under a minute gone by. Here's Rawson in the corner trying to work it inside to Rocks. That one's poked away. Here's Pierce. Pierce goes up with the right, switches it to the left, can't get it to go. Battling on the offensive glass there was number one. That's Solomon. He has it swatted out of there, and here comes 22 feet the other way. Reggie Pugh wanted the foul there. He won't get it. So that will send it back over to Combine Academy. As it looked like there was some confusion there in terms of a sub coming in. It will be Combine Academy bringing in number 13. That's Montero. So Montero seeing his first action of the contest. We're tied at two apiece. Pierce loses the handle. Rots picks it up, gets it in the hands of Janetovich. Janetovich with the floater. He's fouled and will go to the line. Basilis Janetovich has been a 
a relatively long stretch since I've seen this 22 feet academy select squad play, but Janetovic, always an intriguing player to watch for this squad. Good size from the point guard position. Operates well in the mid range. Also comes with a floater game that a lot of times some of the the relatively taller guards don't always have. Obviously, we're talking about at this level. But he goes to the line and makes it four to two. We're going to see a little bit of a zone look here by 22 feet. Combine Academy just probing, trying to figure it out. Three from the corner. That one's short. Cookie's taking on the other end, and that's going to be an easy lay-in for Solomon. So the aforementioned Janetovic not doing the best job of protecting the ball there on that play. Gets it taken. Easy lay-in for Combine Academy. Four to four is your score. Here's Pew. Pew to Rots. Rots has a size advantage inside. And we're going to have a foul against Montero. So Montero called for the foul. Genetovic to inbound it. Gets it out to Rawson. Rawson drops it in the rots. Pew leaves it just short. Montero pulls it out of there for a combine. So we've got a foul there along the baseline. The official literally 30 centimeters away from the play. No foul call, but the official closer to us at the broadcast booth makes the call. Not insinuating anything there, just merely stating facts. Four to four game. And I'll go ahead and acknowledge my, it's not an anti-ref bias. You know, refs, that's one of those underrated jobs. You know, you, you can't please everybody. But I just like to see good basketball. I like to see good players, good teams play. And I want fouls if they're called. I want them to be good foul calls because I don't want poor foul calls having implications later in the game. But I do realize it's a lot easier to be armchair referee when you're sitting on the sidelines than it is to actually be in the, in the game, in the moment, like these refs have to be in, and have to call the action as it happens in game speed. So I do acknowledge that it's a lot easier to critique what they do than to actually do what they do. Just had to include that caveat in there. We're tied up at four apiece. A little bit of chippiness there on that last play as you saw Montero guarding Rawson inside. Neither player did anything wrong, really just a matter of a, you know, physical start to this game. Going to the deck to get it. It's Solomon for Combine Academy. Looks like possession arrow is going to keep it there with 22 feet. We've got a timeout, you see there with Combine Academy, already 1-0 on the day in terms of their blue squad. I believe this is the red squad, but don't quote me on that. Trying to see if they can go 2-0. Meanwhile, 22 feet Academy, trying to get the W here in this one with their select squad, Coach Johnson. Trying to get his team off this four to four tilt that we have so far. You know, when you just look at the airport test in terms of these two teams, from a size standpoint, 22 feet academy has the advantage. But so far, you've seen a Combine Academy team that is physical inside. And what they give up in height, they try to match or compensate for with girth and just, just playing tough on the inside. 
But we've got plenty of game left. I think it's going to be very hard to tend with Aaron Wrights. Players with the size of a, of a Kyle Rawson who can do more aside from just the post, but obviously you want him to be able to use that frame and stature. Rots instead of being in the post there, he takes a jumper from the top of the key. Wide open look. Can't get the shot to go. Janetovic chases it down. That pass intended for Rots going to be broken up. Here's Montero. Looks the defender off. Now he'll kick it to number 11 who stops on his dime. Can't get the shot to go. That was Velasquez. Ross into Janetovic. Janetovic will set him up. Hunt Ramirez for three. Can't get it to go, Rots. There's some of that size that I was talking about. You've seen Velasquez and Montero not be afraid to mix it up inside with some of the, the matchups that they have on the defensive end. It's just a battle of attrition. So one thing to keep a big guy off the glass and keep him from scoring a couple plays, it's hard to do that over the course of an entire two halves. Because Rock's got the better of them there on that last play. But there you see the work inside. Nice positioning and play by Solomon. Genetovic to Rawson. Rawson just inside the three-point line. Last touch by Combine, so it will stay with 22 feet. As Rots is going to have a seat. Coach Johnson daps his big fella up on the way uh, to the water cooler. Got a hydrate period, especially when you got Combine Academy here chomping at the bit. Playing defense by committee on the inside. Solomon pokes that one away from Genetovic. Aaron up is Pierce. Did you hear Pierce call for the end one there? He'll have a chance to get just that. They're at the free throw line. It was Pierce that started off the scoring for Combine Academy. Here you're going to see him go up strong. Rawson tried to change that shot. Ended up reaching in, getting him on the wrist. As Pierce has a chance to knock down another free throw, this one, the back end of the three-point play the hard way, and it's good. So six to nine, not a ton of scoring by either side here. I think a lot of that has been pretty good defense by both sides, and as soon as I say that, you got a wide open three from the corner for Hunt Ramirez. He got the first points, 422 feet on a fast break layup. There he gets his fifth point of the game. After that triple, meanwhile, Pierce didn't come down 85 South to play games. As this time, his triple is from behind the line. He makes it 12 to nine. Coma has it tapped away. Sean Coma will throw it in. Foul on the play there. Recent sub in for 22 feet. That's Thomas White. White fouled on the play. There's Pew. He thought about that three instead. Opted against it. Nice fake. Got the defender in the air and was able to get it in, get it done. That's Reggie Pew. So Pew passed up what would have been not a bad look at a three, but off of the first pass off the inbounds, not necessarily a shot you want to take as you continue to try to get your offense going. Savvy play to go ahead, use the fake, get the defender in the air, and finish. But there he gets called for a charge. Even then, you see Coach Johnson warning Pew to stay into attack mode. Just told him to be a little bit smarter in terms of that shot if he's going to, you know, go for the pull-up. 
and elevate as opposed to just running directly into the player. So, you know, still wanting Pew to be aggressive, but also balance that in with a little bit of IQ to avoid that charge. Going to have a foul there on the rebound attempt against Combine Academy, so it will go to 22 feet. Got a substitution. That's enough time for a replay. Talked about Hunt Ramirez. Liked how he forced the issue uh, for the first bucket of the game for 22 feet there, showing his touch from the outside as he knocked that one down from three-point line. We've got a one-point game. Hunt Ramirez is going to try to get his second three-pointer of the first half. That one in and out. Ball knocked out of bounds by Burnett. Chroma to inbound it. Gets it to White. Try to get that back to Chroma. Burnett knocks it out of bounds. Plenty of time left here in the first half. 12.39 to be exact. Pew has it up top. Hunt Ramirez catch and shoot. Off the mark, rebound brought down by Velasquez. Velasquez with the nice finish. Also a number 10 on the floor for Combine Academy. I didn't see a number 10 on the roster. I believe that's Okafor, though. Rebounding traffic there by Habamana. He'll get it ahead to Hunt Ramirez. Now here's Chroma. Pugh was, will bring it back out. Stopping and popping. Habamana, who says the mid-range is dead? Not in Torre. Habamana splashes that one 14 to 13. Here's Velasquez trying to follow up that two-pointer he hit with a three out of the corner. Mission accomplished. As that is going to prompt a timeout. You take a look at a couple plays over the past few minutes. Uh, Pierce uh, for a combine academy. He's gotten off to a good start here in this one. He's already got 10 points uh, here in this matchup. And then you look on the other end. Those that think we've forgotten about the mid-range, this is what we call mid-change. Splash. Habamana. Easy money. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more here from Greenville, South Carolina. back out of the timeout. I don't know about you, but a Chick-fil-A commercial made me a little hungry over here. I'm going to resist the urge. I definitely need to stop by there tonight. We all know the Sunday Jones that you have for Chick-fil-A when they're not open. Michael White eating on the inside. No Chick-fil-A on his mind. He gets the bucket in the paint. Makes it 15 to 17. Okafor kicks it to the corner. Velasquez has that baseline cut off. Nice defense there by 22 feet. Type of defense you, you know, whether you see what's happening, if you were just to, the, to listen to the feet moving and hear the talking on the defensive end, you make a very safe assumption that good team defense is being played. Good movement there on that defensive possession. Let's see if they can convert or force a turnover there. 
Ball was loose momentarily, but Combine retains possession. Velasquez going to try a three-pointer. Off the mark, right in the hands of Hunt Ramirez, and now here's Reggie Pugh. Abumana guarded by Burnett. Abumana just a nice job of using that length. And then a little bit of an unorthodox handle slash move there. Seventeen apiece. Pierce been a quiet couple minutes for him. Really, he's letting he's letting uh. Let others get involved, hasn't forced the issue. But he got off to a very good start for Combine Academy, and now he's, he's looking to get back in the mix. Foul going to be called on the floor. So Combine Academy will throw it in on the baseline. Real close to a five-second violation there. Janetovich got a hand on it, but Pierce... Able to wrestle it away. A call for foul and one. Seventeen to nineteen, a chance to make it twenty to seventeen for Okafor at the free throw line. That free throw in and out touched every part of the rim. Wanted no parts of the net, though. That one wouldn't stay down. Two-point game, advantage combine academy. Janetovich with it up top. Janetovich hesitates, now explodes. Cannot get the shot to go, but that's part of that intrigue that we talked about. With Vasilis Janetovic, he can really use that side to create shots where he can either shoot over the top of you or use that length to keep you at an arm's distance and create opportunities at the free throw line. He's good on the first free throw. Second one trickles around and falls down. 19 up. Risky pass there. Abumana shows you why. Snatches it out of the air. Looking to push. Cookie's taking on the other end. That's Pierce. Pierce takes off. Can't get that shot to go. He was, went up with bad intentions there. And here we're going to have a trip to the line. That's going to be for Chroma. Thought Pierce was going to give us our first above the rim finish uh, of today's contest. He went to try to finish that one up over Janetovich. Can't get it to go, but on the other end, the first free throw is good for Sean Cromer. Looks like we've got a lane violation against 22 feet. Fisher says no shot. I think Coach Johnson wasn't happy with the call. He's asking, asking for some clarity. Meanwhile, 22 feet comes back, gets the stop on the other end. Now they've got it with Janetovich. He's guarded by Pierce. Pierce trying to go for a five-second violation. Janetovich says, no, sir, gets rid of it. Floater along the baseline is good. Abamano with the bucket, Janetovich with the assist. Over for a spinning, called for the traveling violation. Yeah. 
Here's Michael White with it. Janetovic, his first three-point attempt for the game, and he gets the bounce. Vasilis Janetovic living right. Gets it to fall, and it's a six-point game. Six points was the largest lead for 22 Feet Academy in the varsity squad in the game prior to this one, but it was Combine Academy who came back and held on for the win. Foul out there as he tight roped the sideline with Sean Coma. Chroma at the free throw line. Can't get it to go. We'll see who it was touched by last. Looks like it's going to stay with 22 feet. Good hustle there by Jaron Kells. Stuck with it. Last touch by Combine Academy. 22 feet will throw it in along the baseline. Janetovic. Don't believe he sat at all here in this first half so far. We approach the seven minute mark. Keith has it poked away, but regains it. Low pass. It's fielded by Kales. There's Velasquez trying to turn that defensive pressure up. He's going to be called for the foul. And that's going to be the 10th team foul against Combine Academy. So Janetovic will shoot free throws. First free throw is good. Janetovic, a good presence out there so far here in this first half. Not only been able to see a few go through uh, in terms of scoring, but at different times where Combine Academy is trying to turn the pressure up on him, whether it's through an individual defender or through their team defense, he's handled it very well. Big reason why they currently lead by eight points. So we're going to take a timeout. When we get back, we'll see if Vasilis Janetovic and 22 Feet Academy can add to their lead or how Combine Academy responds. Oh, no hand up? Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. We'll be back after this timeout. Back out of the timeout. Under the seven minute mark here in the first half. Eight point advantage for 22 Feet Academy. We'll see how Combine responds out of the timeout. Pierce has it up top. It'll be a foul called on the floor. It'll be free throws for Pierce regardless with that being the 17th foul against 22 Feet. It's always nice to see a productive possession out of a timeout if you're a coach. As uh, Vasilis Janetovic is going to get a breather. Missing the front end there of that one and one. Was Pierce. With an eight-point game, you can use those free throws if you're Combine Academy. Missing the front end of that one-on-one. -on -one -on -one. Not the same as a turnover, but 
Close enough. At least you do get the foul against that other uh, opponent or against that team, but you want to get the points as well. That bucket was scored by Chroma on the other end. We'll have a foul against 22 feet, so it will be more free throws for Combine. Pierce has a chance to go back and get those two uh, that he left on the shelf last possession. It's the first one. I think we have the makings for what will be a very good game here. You know, while 22 feet is threatened uh, to extend this to double digits. Combine Academy responding by cutting the deficit to eight. And I don't expect Pierce and company to go quietly as he is all over the passing lanes there. Goes up and finishes on the other end. Like I said, the, the roster book only gave me last names for Combine Academy. We've got to get those first names there for you. Going into the second half. Velasquez, pass ahead. It's caught by Pierce, but got up on the rim quickly, quicker than anticipated. Unable to get it to go. Six-point game. Ball off the foot of Michael White. So Chrome was going to pull it back out. They'll reset. So 22 feet will set it back up. A little bit of confusion there. It's going to be a Hunt Ramirez three. Can't get it to go. First time seeing Keith of uh, 22 Feet Academy select play, but he's got a good enough size advantage inside to where I, you know, I have to at least kick the tires in terms of trying to get it down to him. Oh, we heard Kirk, might have heard Coach Johnson calling for that there on that last possession after Keith had set the screen. He was just kind of in no man's land. Then when he was ready to call for it, he and Rots were posting up on the same side. Kale's in need of a lifeline, finds Keith. Keith brought it down where a guard could get to it. Got it back, but then had a tough shot. Pierce will bring it the other way. Pierce for three. Off to the left, Keith with the rebound, gets it to Chroma. We're under five minutes to play here in the first half. That one's good, Habamana. Believe that one was a triple. Yes, it was. Knocked down a nice little mid-range J in that vicinity earlier in the first half. That one's a triple. Cookie's taken on the other end. This should be a flush. Nah, just a basic layup drill. Nothing wrong with it. I feel you, Chroma. Makes it 23 to 34. Pierce. Answering right back, they needed it. And Pierce comes right back with the bucket. A good job getting of getting the defender in the air. And not only making sure he got the foul, but kind of contorted his body. To give himself a real good chance to get that shot up and get the front end of the three-point play. Comes in, knocks down the free throw, and we've got an eight-point game just like that. Rebound going to go off the hands of Kells. So it will be Combine Academy ball. Brought across by Burnett. Burnett is going for the jump step. Had it poked away, tried to go, force a jump ball. One is called, possession arrow. Looks like a timeout might have been called. Before the jump ball. 
Timeout called by 22 feet. So we'll take a timeout with them. When we get back, we'll bring you more here from Greenville, South Carolina. It's been a good game so far for Pierce, but they're still chasing. Not because of a lack of effort on his end. As you see him get the steal, sky for the lay-in, they're on that one. We've got the timeout out of the way. We approach the three minute mark here in the first half. In a back and forth first half, but more points have come forth for 22 feet academy so far. As that play was going well, but a case of the slips he's there by Kells. As he was ready to knock that one down. Lost handle of the ball, it goes the other way. Combine scores, but Aaron Rotz knocks down the jumper along the baseline. Eight point game. Pierce working against Chroma. Penetrates right at the heart of the defense. Finds three white jerseys in his face, so he drops it off. And it's going to be laid in by Solomon. That's why I said we've got the makings for a really good game here. Two well-coached teams here for 22 feet in Combine Academy. Also some good individual pieces. 22 feet Academy off to a nice start, but I don't think Pierce is going. He's not only making plays for himself, making plays for others as well. That one's going to be last touched by Montero. He wanted a foul there. As Vasilis Genetovich, number one, uh, the point guard there for 22 feet, checks back into the game. He'll bring it across the timeline. Lead now cut to six for 22 feet. Largest lead has been nine points. Genetovich with the advantage here in terms of who they have on him. Instead, he's trying to feed it into Rots. He's doubled along the baseline, turns it over. Pierce had it knocked away, regains it. Trying to put the move on Pew. Pew got a hand on it. Abamano nearly had it tapped away by Pierce. Ahead to Pew. Pew fouled on the play. I wasn't able to see what the call was there. I think it might have went against Pew. Maybe Sandy extended the arm there to, to get the offensive foul. I didn't see the signal, but I also didn't see any qualms from, from Coach Johnson. So either a call he agreed with or in terms of picking your battles as a coach, felt like that was a battle not worth fighting. This team has a six-point advantage as we approach the minute mark. Nearly a steal by Janetovic. Almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades as Burnett steps up, knocks down the jumper, and makes it a four-point game. Genetovich baseline drive. Left that one short on the reverse attempt. Stolen by Pierce. Don't have a stat book here, but it would be interesting to see how many steals Pierce has. On top of him scoring the ball, and making plays on the offensive end. He's been solid on the defensive end as well. Four point game, Janetovic pass to Rats. Rats wants everybody to eat. The assist to Thomas White. White with the lay in, six point game. And you expect Combine Academy to hold for the last shot here. They've got it in the hands of Pierce. Pierce 
Instead of holding for the last shot, he had a wide open Montero. He got it to him. Genetovich with the shot fake gets it up. And that will do it. So appreciate you joining us here on SUV TV. We'll take a break for halftime when we get back. 22 Feet Academy, we'll see if they can extend this lead versus Combine. 22 Feet Academy TV. Powered by SUV TV. Sponsored by Muscle Milk, the official protein recovery drink of 22 Feet Academy. Denny's, welcome to America's Diner. Under Armour, protect this house. And the Imagine Center, health and fitness club, the official venue of 22 Feet Academy. The feeling of the perfect shot feels effortless to me. Right when I release that shot, it just feels serene and quiet. It's only me and the rim and the basketball. With my height, to have an impact and to be the player that I wanted to be, I needed to change my shot, and that was going to be something that would be beneficial for the long term. The process started just breaking my shot down from the initial release to the follow through. And there were days that I couldn't even get the ball to the rim. There were days that I couldn't go outside of the paint area. It was very frustrating to not be able to, to shoot the way that I wanted to. The hardest part of that process was definitely the patience. But if I just stuck to getting better every day, eventually I would be able to shoot where I wanted to anywhere on the floor. Went through some tough days, but found a way to just persevere and see it through. It starts with a great base and great foundation and allows everything to feel perfect. things.
All right, we are about 20 seconds away from getting the second half started. Appreciate you joining us here. For those that might have missed the first half, it's a four-point advantage uh, for 22 Feet Academy. You look at some of the leading scorers there in that first half. On the Combine Academy side, Bradley Pierce had 15 points. Got off to a great start. And uh, he'll definitely be a player that you'll hear more of and see more of uh, here in this second half. You look at the 22 Feet Academy side in Torre Habamana and Vasilis Genetovic both had nine points apiece there in that first half. Genetovic number one there in the white jerseys for 22 Feet. Very solid point guard. Really helps set the table for the squad, not only in terms of direct plays, scoring the ball, addition to others, but just that composure, that presence out there. As we see a zone look here to open out the second half. And while you want to make things difficult, you don't necessarily expect a turnover each possession with that zone, but I'm sure you'll take it there if you're Coach Johnson here for 22 feet. So they force a turnover right out the gate. We'll see how they open up their first possession of the second half. Here's Rawson looking to go to work. Can't get the roll. Genetovich chases down the long rebound. Hunt Ramirez, just five points there in that first half, but he got the first layup for 22 feet academy and also knocked down a triple. We'll see how he does here in the second half. Nedevich hesitates, wants to get it inside to Rots. Rots has the advantage. Rots is telling him, go ahead, shoot it. And he got the smaller Josue Velasquez guarding Rots. Not a lot of space to work with there on that side of the floor as they had Hunt Ramirez in the corner, Genetovich driving to his right and Rots trying to post up there on that block. And what's interesting is that Rots had Velasquez, who's smaller than Pierce on the other block, not by a ton, by a couple inches, and doesn't quite have the same leaping ability that a Pierce has. He didn't want the ball inside there, but then when he had Pierce on the other block, they tried to post it up. So. Really just in a relatively out of whack possession uh, there for 22 feet. They're going to take a timeout to talk it over as they try to inbound it. And uh, we're going to go ahead and keep it here. Let's look at this 22 feet uh, Academy Select Squad. Look at their season up to this point. They're coming off of a win versus Faith Baptist Academy there in Charleston, South Carolina as part of the, part of the Port City Classic. They defeated Faith Baptist 53-45. to After two straight losses, uh, they lost to Port City Prep 57-58, to a close one, and then a tough one to Believe Prep. Now they'll come out of the timeout. Janetovic will throw it in. Rawson inside to Rots. Rots. A little bit of jump hook action. The big fella showing the footwork and the touch inside. He was posted up against the smaller Naquan Solomon. Solomon. Coach Johnson makes his case. That was a poor foul call there. Did look like Solomon was out of control. Not sure if the foul actually came. Let's take a look at it. So you see him cut, spins. Rawson had a hand in there, but didn't look like he actually fouled him. Official thought otherwise, foul called.
Quan Solomon, second free throw is good. Hunter Ramirez to Rawson. Now here's Janetovich. Janetovich working on Velasquez. Too easy. I think Velasquez has the advantage in that matchup. You know, Velasquez has guarded, you know, a few different, a few different players, but anytime Janetovich has the smaller Velasquez or some of the other guards that have, have drew his straw in terms of guarding him on the defensive end. He has that advantage. Uses it there on that last play. Seven point game. Burnett gonna try a three pointer. Money. Nothing but net for Michael Burnett. 38 to 42. We approach the 17 minute mark. Now I think defensively, not to say it's a walk in the park, you're, you're going to fare a lot better if you've got number one, Naquan Solomon, or number 32, Bradley Pierce, guarding Janetovich on the defensive end. Janetovich wraparound pass to Rots. Rots gathers himself and is able to finish. Three-point attempt, no good. Six-point lead, 422 feet. Outside of that Burnett three, last possession, 22 feet has done a good job of making things tougher. You've also seen Combine Academy take a couple quick threes as opposed to looking for something a little bit more higher percentage. Talked about Janetovich and just that presence on the court here. He's going to get past that Pierce still attempt. And find Rots. Rots goes ahead, gets Solomon in the air. And it's a layup drill from there. First free throw off the mark for Reggie Pugh. Second free throw is good. Coach Eric Simpson and his Combine Academy squad currently trailing by seven. Velasquez trying to make it five. Can't do it. That's a, another quick three-pointer. Here's Pew. Nobody stops ball. So Pew says, why should I stop? Takes it all the way to the rack. Nine-point game. There's Burnett. Burnett avoids the signage on the side. Throws it in, but it's 22 feet up. And back to the action, 15 minutes and 30 seconds left to play here in the second half. Had a little bit of a collision here in the broadcast area. 
Good hustle there by Burnett of Combine Academy. He couldn't come up with the possession for a squad, but still hustling, trying to get to it. And it's 22 feet that has opened up an 11-point advantage here as we are just over the 15-minute mark. Going to have a trip to the free throw line coming for Burnett. Free throws good. Makes it a 10 point game. Second one good as well. 11 point advantage. 22 feet still in control of this one, but a nine point game now after those free throws. Genetovic from the corner. Ice cream. Splashes it from the corner. Vasilis Genetovic scoring in a variety of ways here in this one. Nine first half points. He's got five here in the second half. Answering right back is Combine. They make it 42 to 52. Here's Pugh with it, back to Janetovic. Uses that last three point make to draw the quick close out in there, it's about the floater. Told you Janetovic is an intriguing player. He's showing you some of the reasons why here throughout this game. Pass inside to Solomon. Solomon trying to work against Rawson. Oh, tough move right there. Meat and potatoes move on the inside. He just wanted that one. Nice defense by 22 feet, just made him make a tough shot. Like to see how that was defended there. Sometimes you'll see teams waste a, a pointless foul. If he's gonna make that shot falling backwards, one defender in front, one defender behind him, see if he can make it. And in the Quan Solomon's case, he was able to. Elbow jumper, that one's off the mark by Rocks. Velasquez with the rebound. Here's Burnett, Burnett looking to go coast to coast. Hangs in the air, can't get it to go. Solomon attempt no good, and now here it's in the hands of Genetovic. He'll pull up, drawing the defense. Nice work there by 22 feet. Initial pass made by Genetovic, and it was Reggie Pugh getting it to Rawson, who finishes. 12-point game, that floater. Off the mark, but Velasquez able to pick up the pieces and score it. Ball is loose, now it's going to be picked up by St. Albany. And if you're Bradley Pierce, you, you just can't wait for the next dead ball. You're trying to get back into this game, but no dead balls have come for you to be able to do so. Ten-point game. Pugh gets it in the corner to Janetovic, back to Pugh. He'll try to float it. Rods had great position there, left the first shot short. Power dribble, and he muscles that one in. Talked about that size for 22 feet. Combine did a good job on it early on, but it's a battle of attrition in terms of being able to do that for the entire game. And we're just seeing Rots kind of wear him out. Strong drive there by Pierce. Shot was changed, can't get it to go. Ross in the head. Here's Chroma. Chroma might have had that one partially tipped. But following up is Rawson. Now it's a 14 point advantage. Coach Simpson wanted an and one. Here on that Burnett drive and finish. Rots gets behind the defense, pushed in the backhand one. All this while Bradley Pierce is still waiting to check into the game. 
for Combine Academy. We look at some of the key plays over this last little stretch. Talked about Vasilis Janetovic. Just having a solid game all around. Setting the table. Handling the pressure. Making sure everybody eats. Including making sure his plate is full as well. As he knocks that one down from the corner. Nothing but string music. And then we're going to take a look here. This time Janetovic. He's already knocked down a couple threes. Gets Velasquez to bite. Pew. It's St. Auburn in the air, and it's just an easy layup. Half a mic and drill for Rawson. The advantage is now 16. I, I look for Bradley Pierce to really have a sense of urgency, not to necessarily try to do it himself, but really try to be a, a catalyst here for Combine Academy, 11 minutes left, plenty of time. But even then, you can't afford to trade baskets here with 22 feet. Strong drive there by John Montero. Foul caught on the floor, so Pierce will throw it in. Gets it right back. Can't get the three to fall. Rebound by Thomas White. Abomana to Janetovic. He'll try another three-pointer. That one's short. White has it stripped away. Ball still loose. Pierce picks it up. He's got Burnett running with him. No look pass. Burnett with the reverse. Nedevich comes right back, gets it to Hunt Ramirez. Ramirez hasn't taken a shot in quite a few minutes. That one's off the mark. Solomon drops it off, and it's going to be an easy lay-in for Montero. Here comes Combine Academy. They pull it to within 11. Now they're working inside to White. He's going against Solomon. Reaching in, believe that foul is going to go against John Montero. So that will send White to the free throw line. If you're Thomas White, you want to be able to knock down both of these free throws. This Combine Academy is trying to surge over these past few minutes. That one won't stay down for him. That one's off the mark. Hunt Ramirez working hard. Solomon blocks that one and then chases it down. Gets it ahead to Montero. Montero to Burnett. Burnett wide open. Off the back of the rim. Not a bad shot, though. Trying to force it ahead. Chroma nearly chased it down, but Burnett goes and gets it. Over to Pierce, Pierce fakes the pass, now he'll drive. Hang in the air, no foul called. He wanted the end one, so did Coach Simpson, but they'll settle for the deuce without it. And we've got a nine point game. Here comes Combine Academy. We will see how Janetovic and 22 Feet Academy respond. Here's Solomon, over to Janetovic. Now Janetovic is guarded by Obre Rufus. In terms of momentum, I'd say it's on the side of Combine Academy right now, but you've got a cushion. If you're 22 feet Academy, you had a nine-point cushion, and now you make it 12 after that Hobby Mana three-pointer. So we've got a timeout. We're going to take one with them. Hobby Mana with a nice response, but here's Bradley fakes that pass. Skies up. Good no call there. There was no contact. At least from what we can see there on that replay. But Bradley Pearson, Combine Academy, trying to close the gap. We'll be back.
Nine minutes, three seconds remaining here in the game. 12-point advantage for 22 feet. Big response there for Intori Abomana with that three-pointer from the corner. But still plenty of time left here. Burnett goes up high to get it. Looks like we're going to have a foul against Aaron Rotts. Actually, I think they signaled that one against Chroma. So Burnett will throw it in, 12-point game. A lot of air under that pass, nearly stolen by Habamana, but Solomon gets it. Over to Pierce. And have a foul called on the play. Foul's going, they're going to call the foul before the shot. They'll call it on the floor. Burnett will throw it in. Pierce guarded by Chroma. Looking to work along the baseline. Rawson's right there to greet him, so he passes it inside to Solomon, who lays it in. Mentioned in the first half how we could be in for quite a good finish when you look at how Janetovic has played uh, 422 feet. Habamana having a good game as well. And you know Pierce looking to make his presence felt, whether it's scoring it directly or being able to make plays for others like we saw him do there on that last play. Combine Academy catches Rawson there along the sideline, uses that sideline as a third defender. And they get the turnover, and Combine will have the ball. We talked about Bradley Pierce. He's not going to go quietly by any means. Working along the baseline, he sees Naquan Solomon. Solomon with the lay-in. Ten-point game. We approach the eight-minute mark. Pierce got caught in a tough spot there. He had picked up his dribble. That was a nice defense by Reggie Pugh. Pugh helped out there. Pierce picked it up, kind of got caught in no man's land with nowhere to go. Pass flew right by Solomon. Rawson wants it inside. Pass was tipped. Habumana has that one blocked by Pierce. Pierce gathers it. Now he's looking to push. Hangs in the air, first shot no good, working hard for a second opportunity. And that will be, should be the 17 foul against 22 feet, so that's going to send Pierce to the free throw line. So with seven minutes, 32 seconds left here in this game, that's a 17 foul, so it will be free throws from here on out for team fouls against 22 feet. Just 14 fouls against Combine Academy. Definitely a dynamic to watch. Combine can take advantage of being able to get points without the clock moving. That is if you hit those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. Front end is missed, so it goes right back to 22 feet. Rawson fouled. believe they'll call it before the shot. Checking in for combine, number 12, Jess St. Aubin, and number 10, David Okafor. Janetovic checking back in and throwing it in for 22 feet. Rocks has it poked away. He'll get it to Pew. Pew has it knocked away by Pierce. Pierce takes it right at Janetovic. Good defense. Now trying to clear the rebound out of there. Rock picks it up. And he'll get it over to Chroma. Pew calls for it. Pew missed the first shot. Janetovic with the follow. Can't get it to go. Solomon gets it ahead to Pierce. Pierce, one man to beat. Takes it right at him. And finishes. Four, four. 
Pierce a hard player to stop there in that situation, not only because of how strong he attacks and pretty good leaping ability, but he's also very quick off the floor to follow his shots. Chroma comes right back, gets a trip to the line. It's an eight-point game here with 6.33 left. First free throw is good. Second one's good. Checking back into the game for 22 feet. It will be number 12, Simon Hunt Ramirez. Burnett gets the step. Nice defense there by Pugh as he met him, changed that shot. 10 point game, Habamana looking to add to it, drops it off to Rots who uses the window. You will not find a bank open at 8.28 p.m. here on the East Coast. But Rots gets that one to go off the window. Jumper just outside the elbow, off the mark by Solomon. Janetovic, too strong there on the jump shot. So here's Pierce. Pierce didn't get a touch the last two possessions. We'll see what he does with this one. Top of the key, off the side to the left. Rots couldn't corral it in. We're going to have a timeout by head coach Eric Simpson for Combine Academy. We'll take a timeout with him. When we get back, we'll bring you the final five minutes and 34 seconds here from Greenville. Out of that Combine Academy timeout, 12-point game, 534 remaining. Bradley Pierce, that pass, way too short for his intended recipient. Abamana's fouled on the other end by Burnett. Like a little bit of miscommunication there between Burnett and Pierce. Where that pass was thrown, not sure if Pierce was expecting Burnett to curl or not. But either way, 22 feet academy was all over it. They got the steal, converted on the free throws, and now it's a 14 point game, just over five minutes left to play. I think Pierce is gonna see a lot of double teams in an effort for them to get the ball out of his hands and make somebody else try to lead this comeback effort. Nice hands there by Janetovic. He gets the steal. He'll come the other way. 22 feet going to take their time. After all, it is on their side with a 14-point advantage and under five minutes left to play. St. Auburn to Solomon. Solomon for three. Yeah. 
Janelovic has a taste and kicks it into another gear and gets it to fall. Pass intended for Solomon there. Now Solomon ahead to Pierce. Pierce, easy layup. Stutter step, now drop off to Rocks. Rocks with the lay-in. Now it's just a, a typical cat and mouse game here. Combine chasing, trying to get quick buckets and trying to get stops, but at that point to where fatigue kind of setting in a little bit, so it's very tough to push the envelope on the defensive end, get the stops you need, and then try to push to get the buckets you need in order to still have a chance to win this game with more and more time running off the clock. So 3.35 left, you've got just enough time for a run. And when I say just enough, that could even be stretching it. It's 22 feet academy, well coached enough and with a good enough point guard to be able to drain some clock. Reggie Pugh and Sean Croma will more likely did not split the, the duties of bringing the ball up the floor as Janetovich has been subbed out. Here's Pugh. Back tap by Pierce. Now to throw it ahead to him. He's got Croma right behind him. Nobody yelled Wolf. It'll be knocked out of bounds. Kyle Rawson checks back in. Torre Habermana will have a seat. Burnett loses the handle. Hunt Ramirez got tripped up, but White will bring it the other way, and White gets the bounce. Thomas White. We'll have a foul on the play. That is one in one, in one scenario. First free throw good for Pierce. Second one will swish through. Still a 16-point game. And you get the feeling at this point, the final three minutes or so is just a formality. 22 feet has been in control despite a few potential runs made by Combine. So it's really their game to lose at this point. That three-pointer was long. Bradley Pierce still in attack mode. Still a 14-point game, though. This time, nice defense by Velasquez, but Combine turns it right back over. Tough break there if they could have turned that, that turnover into a score. Could have pulled them to within 12 points. Stranger things have happened. But now Janetovic back into the game for Coach Johnson's 22 feet academy squad. Floats it up off the back of the rim, but he'll tip it to Hunt Ramirez. Hunt Ramirez for three. Can't get it to go. Burnett with the rebound ahead to Bradley Pierce. He's going to see red for the rest of the game. Contact there on that play. Pierce just kind of gives the refs a look like, man, what do I have to do to get an and one? Meanwhile, it's another kiss off the glass by Janetovich.
Two of the focal players here in this game as you're going to see Pierce on one end. Wanted the foul call there, didn't get it. Meanwhile, coming right back on the other end is Janetovic, and I mean, this is just too easy for him. Just kind of plays the defense. Defender doesn't really commit. So he keeps it, reads the situation, floats it up off the glass. Good, good play there by Janetovic. Even with a play like that, a lot of times you'll see a player with a predetermined read. He's just focusing on passing it. And in that instance, if he would have made that pass off, Solomon was kind of waiting for that. So Janetovic, a good job of just holding on to the ball and just reading the situation. Pierce drops it off. Lay-in made by John Montero. Now it's a 12-point game. You're probably going to see Combine try to go for the steal. And if they don't get it, try to extend the game with the foul. Here we're going to have a violation against 22 feet. I have no idea where the violation occurred at. But I do know it's going back to Combine Academy. Pierce, it's go time for him. He gets it to Solomon. Solomon, a power dribble, splits through two defenders and lays it in. We've got a 10-point game now. Combine, not thinking about the highway and the trip home just yet. They feel like they still got a chance in this one. Offensive foul is going to send it the other way. Coach Eric Simpson, really you're focused on your team coming back in this one. You're not thinking about any sort of moral victory or, or attaboy just for making a valiant effort. But for those of us that aren't on the court right now or in the middle of the game, you can applaud this Combine Academy effort because they are making what I thought was really just a, a game where 22 Feet Academy could just kind of run the clock out, not do totally stall ball, but really just take their time, spread it around, and the game would be over. Now it's gotten a little bit interesting. It's an eight-point game. Pass over to Chroma. Chroma will lay it in. So we're seeing a good run made by Combine. Might be a case of too little, too late. They don't have a bunch of time. They'll need to get a shot up quickly here. That one's off the back of the rim. Back top attempt by Pierce. Rawson able to hold on to it. Twenty-two feet Academy's ball there along the baseline. They get it into White. White can't get the shot to go. Rebound by Montero. Montero to Burnett. Burnett, quick catch and shoot. Good. Seven point game. Time continuing to run out. Precious seconds going off the clock. Combine still playing hard. Coast to coast with the finish. That's Jaron Kells. Seeing our pass. I don't know how Burnett managed to get that one through to Pierce, but he did. They get it to Chroma. Chroma ahead to White. White. He'll dunk that one off the back of the rim, but that's going to do it. 22 feet Academy able to hold on and get the seven point victory here over Combine. Nothing to hang their heads about. 22 feet, able to just make it happen here today. Valiant effort on behalf of Coach Eric Simpson's Combine Academy squad. Appreciate you joining us here at 22 Feet Academy. Signing off until next time.